One of the really cool features that was introduced as part of version 6 of JavaScript were the arrow functions, or sometimes called fat arrow functions. These functions are not so much a new capability of JavaScript, it's just a new way that you can write compact functions. It's kind of an abbreviated syntax for writing functions. It's not that there's new things you can do with them, it's just you can write your code a little bit faster, a little bit more compact. Now you won't, don't want to use these for every function. You don't want to use them all the time because if you're really compacting your code too much, you are going to be losing a little bit of readability. It does make it a little bit more difficult for other people to understand your code. So what we're going to do here is just look at some callback function scenarios where you've got a simple little function and you just want to lose some of the boilerplate. Um, with the arrow functions, we can get rid of the keyword function, the keyword return. We can lose the curly braces in some instances and we can lose, get rid of the parentheses that are around the input parameters in some cases. So let's take a look at an example. I've got two arrays here, uh, one called numbers, one called names. One's a bunch of numbers, one's a bunch of names. And I'm going to write a function here using the um, filter method, the array filter method. I want to extract from my numbers array all of the numbers that are greater than the value 300, let's say. So I've declared my variable big. It's going to hold the resulting array and numbers dot filter is going to allow me to call the callback function once for each element in the array. There's five numbers, so this function is going to get called five times. I will have a variable called item, which will contain each of those individual numbers. And I'm going to return item greater than 300. Okay, very simple function. All I'm doing is going through those numbers and saying return true or false based on whether or not the number I'm looking at is greater than 300. All right, if I run this code now, there we go, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7. Those are the three numbers that are greater than 300. Now, <clears throat> the array arrow function, the, sorry, the array <laughs> filter method using the arrow function. That's what I meant to say. Okay, numbers.filter, nothing new here. It's going to take the callback function. Now this callback function, this is where we're going to use the array, uh, the arrow function syntax. I don't need the word function. I do want the variable item. Because there's only one variable being passed in, I don't need to put parentheses around it. This is the new part right here. This is why it's called an arrow function. This character combination, when you see that, this is a function. I'm passing this into my function. My function is going to return item greater than 300. So it's going to return true or false here. And this true or false is going to be determined whether or not the item is greater than 300 or not. I don't have the word return here because <clears throat> if I only have one item, then or one line of code, the return is assumed to exist. So the result of this will be returned back to filter. So I've got big and big A. Those are the two things I'm going to console log here. If I write them out, run this code. And numbers, plural, yes, that's important. Always make sure you use the correct name for your variable. Okay. There we go. You can see the exact same result from both of these. So we've got filter running with a regular function and filter running with the simplified, abbreviated arrow function syntax. So we got rid of the keyword function. We got rid of the keyword return. We got rid of the curly braces around the code. And we got rid of the parentheses around this. Now, if you have more than one input parameter, you do need to put the parentheses around it with commas between them, the same way that you would in here. <clears throat> if you have more than one line of code that's doing more than one thing, 
then you would put the curly braces around this part of the code. So just as an example of using two parameters, what we're going to do is we're going to take the names and I'm just going to use a for each method and write out each of those names with the index number. So to start off with, we'll say let, actually we don't even need a variable for this, we're just going to console log stuff out. So I'll say names for each and then the callback function, the old regular syntax, item index, that's the number, and the name and the number. And inside here, console.log, and we'll write out the index first, followed by the name. Run that code. There we go. 0 through 5, and those are the names, in the order that they were written here. Now, the abbreviated arrow function syntax for this. We don't need the word function. We don't need the word return. We're not returning anything, but we don't need the word function. I am passing in two values here, item and index. So I do need to put parentheses around those. Item index, then we add our fat arrow, and then our one line of code. Because there's only one line, we don't need the curly braces, and we can just write index and item. There, run the code again. There we go, and we can see it repeats the exact same thing. So that's all there is to arrow functions. It's just understanding it's an abbreviated syntax, stripping off some of the boilerplate to make your code a little bit more compressed, a little bit more efficient. You don't want to use this for huge chunks of code. You want to use it in situations like this where you've got a simple little callback function. You just want to quickly get the answer without having to write out four lines of code. And that's it.